Um, well, welcome to the April object lesson. And tonight's speaker is Jack Laramore. And we're so happy to have him here with us. If you haven't joined us before for object lesson, it is a speaker series that we do monthly that opens up the Center for Art and Woods permanent collection doors wide for everyone to experience through the perspective of other individuals. Tonight is Jack Laramore, as I mentioned. So Jack Laramore grew up in Cherry Orchard region of Northeastern Michigan. He attended Michigan State University, earning a degree in landscape architecture in 1973. Since 1983, Laramore has been self-employed as a sculptor and furniture maker. His work has been exhibited internationally and is included in major private and public collections. Additionally, he has served as a professor in the crafts department at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia, as an advisory board member of the Furniture Society, and as a trustee for the Center for Art and Wood and a board member at Wheaton Arts and Cultural Center. Before I hand it off to Jack, I just wanna do a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we are gonna ask everybody to just remain muted that are virtual. And well, for the rest of you here, you know, don't speak too loudly, not yet at least. Um, if you need subtitles for those that are virtually, there is the CC item um, in a box at the lower item on, on a laptop, upper corner in the right-hand side for other devices. Click on that and you'll have your subtitles. Uh, and actually, I need to open those. So give me one second and I will get those open for everyone. There we go. Um, and um, Jack, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to you. And I'm going to mute my. Jack is muted. And then we are gonna make sure you have sound. Okay, let's go ahead. Testing, testing. Are we all good? Mark, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can. Wait. Okay. Uh, thank you, Katie. Um, so, and uh, uh, formally, I want to thank uh, Nava, Katie Sorensen, uh, Karen Schoenwald. Uh, these guys uh, do such a beautiful job of putting together this um, series. Uh, and I'm I feel so privileged to be a part of it. It's been a great uh, series, the object lesson, lessons. Um, and uh, I've really enjoyed the sessions that I've tuned into, uh, very expansive. And um, uh, and I also wanna thank uh, Albert Lakoff because it, uh, um, as, as most of us know, he's the guy that uh, has, uh, Whose, whose vision we are riding on here, uh, vision and tenacity. Uh, so there is, a, uh, there is a collection here because of Albert's uh, tenacity and uh, there's a center here and there's a, there's a uh, uh, beautiful cases where the, the collection's housed. So um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite accomplishment and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great to be able to be on this side of, um, uh, the conversation uh, and uh, have the opportunity to actually formally revisit the collection. I'm aware of the collection and and been involved with it a bit, but it's been really great experience to to have an assignment of looking at the collection and thinking about what I wanted to say. Um, so uh, and then uh, uh, I'd also like to thank the audience, all y'all, for uh, showing up. Uh, 
is Friday night, uh, you guys. I don't know, but uh, thanks for showing up. Uh, it's amazing. Um, so uh, I'd like to start off uh, with a little video. Uh, and remarkably, uh, a dear friend of mine uh, was uh, the writer, the producer, the, uh, the director, and the, the main character in this video. And uh, it's, I think it's very poignant, uh, spot on, and it's a great way for us to start our conversation about craft as a verb. So with any luck, Okay, I'm not advancing. Oh, there I am. Pretty amazing. It's a nice way to start off Friday night. <laughs> this runs for another like 20 minutes. You guys good? Everybody okay with this? <laughs> Her name is Robin, but it's I N, not Y N. She's old school. Nice bow. All right. So that's my presentation. Are there any questions now? <laughs> We're good? Just kidding. Uh, so, so I've decided to do this thing on craft as a verb. It's sort of an interesting um, uh, approach uh, to thinking about objects for me. Um, I've probably bitten off more than I can chew, but um, I guarantee you uh, this is not going to be scholarly. Um, uh, it's not really in my toolbox. Um, so most of what I'm interested in tonight is just sharing some insights sharing some experiences uh, and uh, honestly, really looking forward to uh, you guys doing the same thing. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to have some conversation and I hope the presentation um, inspires some. Um, so craft is a verb. Um, it's, it's sort of amazing uh, when I thought about it a bit. Um, how much energy uh, we have all uh, put into defining craft as a noun. Um, uh, uh, for all of my uh, professional life in this field, it seems like uh, there's been a lot of effort put towards defining craft as a verb and, um, and, and basically finding a place for it uh, in the world. Um, and so, so people, um, uh, look at what we do in a certain way. So, <clears throat> um, so in a way, it's sort of exhausting. There's been a lot of really interesting work done, and uh, it's it's remarkable. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, uh, we, we've done it in, uh, in in really brilliant ways. Um, so I, I really want to talk about um, thinking of uh, craft as a verb and, and using that as a filter to look at things. Um, and I'll have to say that uh, for me, uh, nouns are particularly limiting. Uh, you know, they're not very sensual, and um, uh, and they don't, for me, they don't really expand experience that much. Uh, 
So uh, I like thinking uh, and looking at things uh, with, uh, with the verb in mind. Um, I mean, for instance, uh, using the words uh, nest, paint, and kiss um, versus nesting, painting, and kissing. Big difference. The last three, I think, are more interesting, especially for me. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I don't really want this to get too involved with semantics. It's not, not really what we're trying to do here. Um, so I'm hoping this is a provocative conversation and that maybe we find ways to um, look at makers and making and objects that are made in, in sort of a different way. So that's, that's the objective here. Um, uh, and, and sort of expanding our, our way of doing things. <clears throat> so, uh, Ann Hamilton, um, one of my very, 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 very favorite artists, um, uh, really a, a, a amazing a treasure. And um, uh, she gets involved with fairly large scale uh, um, uh, pieces, installations that are that also have a lot of uh, um, participation uh, in them, and um, so uh, and she's got a lot of remarkable quotes. I think she's just sort of a spot on in her in her way that she approaches work. So um, this, I think, is a is a very sort of poignant uh, entry point here in the conversation. Every act of making matters how we make matters. I like to remember the, and remark with regularity that the word making occupies 17 pages in the Oxford Diction, English Dictionary. Uh, 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 so there are multiple possibilities for a lifetime of making, to make a cup, a conversation, a building, an institution, to make a memory, boom, to make, make peace, make a poem, a song, a drawing, a play. Um, you know, to make a metaphor that changes and enlarges um, or inverts the way we understand or see something. I mean, this is, this is so apt and so important to uh, certainly the way I approach things. And I think it's true for, uh, for a, lot of, a lot of makers, um, you know, acts that amplify. Um, and it's interesting, uh, she will always describe herself as a maker, not an artist. Um, and um, I, I think that's also sort of spot on. It's, it's, it uh, really clarifies the way that she approaches her work. Um, and uh, it's also clear that she finds herself through the process of making. And um, I think that's also really true of, of uh, most makers that uh, the, the objective is to find out more about yourself um, and, and the, the, the the medium or the, the, the vehicle to do that is through making. Um, <clears throat> so uh, in, in uh, Bob uh, or in uh, Bill Daly's uh, wise words, uh, that is probably enough of that sort of blather. Um, talk less and experience more kind of stuff. Um, so <clears throat> um, we're going on to sort of craft as a verb and um, uh, <clears throat> I've, I've broken this down in a way that um, is probably so, uh, simplistic. I don't think it's overly simplistic, but it's simplistic and in, in, in an effort to sort of um, uh, just look at this in, through this one lens or this one filter so to, to get a good feel for it. So um, I'm not, I, I can't, I can't spin that many plates, so I've, I've narrowed the uh, the range of what I can do here. Um, and, and I'd also like to say, uh, which I should have said earlier, um, people that have comments or questions, uh, let's just do it. Uh, this is you know I'm, this ain't just formal. So um, uh, uh, if if you've got something that you want to add or contribute and or question or whatever, uh, let's just take a moment to do that. Um, rather than waiting till the end to do it. Um, I guess you can also type it in somewhere and we'll be monitoring that. Okay, 
Um, <clears throat> so um, this, this relates to this more expansive uh, look at, at what craft is at, and, um, and, and as a verb. And so on this image, we've got a combination of things. The, up, the upper left is actually just a, 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 a photo shot out of one of those journals up on the shelf there. And this is John, a John Grass wood turning company uh, business journal, their ledger, uh, 1930 something. Um, uh, and uh, in looking at all these things, I just I'm trying to have us expand the idea that um, I think it's the same part of the brain that uh, crafts an effective journal, a good journal, and a good Excel page. I mean, these are all things that um, sort of come out of the same part of the brain and, and I think uh, connect us all in a way. Um, uh, the lower left, I think, speaks for itself. Probably speaks something about my culinary uh, <laughs> attitude. Um, uh, the center image is this is a picture of the collection right here. And um, uh, I look at the collection in the same way. This collection has really been um, uh, crafted. There's a lot of care that's been put into it, you know, just in the in the way that objects are brought in, in the way that they're taken care of, in the way that they have been put in cases, and now the way that they're cataloged, and um, and it's just amazing. And uh, it, you know, for me, doing the research for this, uh, you know, honestly, uh, you know, Karen and 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 Katie, I mean. It's, it's a really joy to use it because it's so well cataloged, you know, and you think, well, okay, I got all the objects and you got to have, a, yeah, they need to be cataloged, you know, because it's a collection and, and, um, and there's different points of entry to it. So it's, um, it's beautifully crafted. Uh, craft beer, I mean, boom, they, they've climbed on. I mean, they, you know, they see a good, uh, a good term when they, uh, they know a good term when they see it. Um, uh, and then in the, in the lower right is, a, is an image um, that uh, expresses uh, craft as a verb in a lot of ways. I mean, that's a very, it's an iconic image. It's an image of Martha Graham, the, the dancer, of course, um, taken by uh, Barbara Morgan. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's about the image. It's about capturing a moment. It's about um, expressing a moment. Uh, and all these things have that same sort of commonality in terms of um, uh, approaching it as a craft with care, doing what you're doing with care. Um, and um, so, so this is this is sort of the the the, the smorgasbord uh, image of the presentation. So we're going to move into more specific pieces that are in the gallery. Um, <clears throat> So, um, and you'll see in the upper right of these images now, I've, I've sort of created the verb, right, that I'm, that I'm speaking to. So uh, with all of these objects, there's, a, there's, a, there's a multiple ways of, uh, of entering and a discussion about them. And, I, and I'm not gonna get into talking about the history of the pieces too much or, um, talking, uh, getting great depth in the pieces. I'm, I'm just sort of looking at them and saying, okay, so what if we look at them uh, through this lens? And um, uh, what, what, how does that expand our experience in a way? Um, so uh, 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 Susan Hagen's piece um, is here on the table for, for those folks that are here, uh, the upper left. Um, uh, and, and Susan's a, a figurative carver, uh, extremely skilled, and uh, she's very interested in uh, mysticism. And uh, so this, the, the subject matter here comes from a long line of, of, um, of expressions of this um, Sharon, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, uh, the boatman. Uh, Beside it is a is a fifteenth fifth century BC uh, Greek 
illustration, I think this is a drawing on clay, uh, dealing with the same, same myth, same content. Um, so uh, what's, what's really beautiful is that, that, uh, that Susan has contemporized this, right? And so this is not really, uh, it's not really a portrait of this guy. Um, she had a, she had a guy, and 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 she could assign some uh, some mythical characteristics to this guy, but um, really she's just delving into a contemporized version of the same myth. So so the idea of using an object to tell a story um, is a is a really powerful thing, and um, and, uh, and and Susan's able to do it well. If you look into her work, she's got. A long range of uh, a wide range of, of, of pieces that tell stories, um, and then in the, the lower right um, is Hartmut uh, Redemans, and this is a piece that uh, he did during the uh, residency, uh, the Wingate residency uh, in, in 2019. And uh, the interesting thing about this guy, he's actually a, like a real deal master craftsman. Uh, this guy. German apprenticeship, blah blah blah. Uh, so, so he's like highly skilled, and um, what he wanted to explore was was being able to um, find a way to to make these expressions with a chainsaw, and so a completely different uh, approach between uh, Susan and he, um, uh, and yet both remarkably satisfying um, examples of. Sort of storytelling. Right. So smaller than you would think, given it's done with a chainsaw. <laughs> um, so uh, and and beside his piece, I put a, a, a photograph of John Carlano, and John, uh, equally, John Carlano is a very skilled photographer. And he he does a lot of our um, uh, work. Uh, 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 documents a lot of ours work. Um, and for his own work, his, in this series, he's chosen to do some storytelling and sort of work with images that are not um, uh, uh, realistic, but, but have, a, have a sense of mystery about them. Um, so I think there's a beautiful sort of com uh, uh, comparison with, with John and, and Hartman's work. Um, and again, it's, there, you know, just when, when you walk around and look at things it's sort of like so what is this about is this about the chainsawing uh is it about the chunk of wood or is it, you know for me it's about the storytelling and and him finding a way to do it um that's it's so impressive all right gord peter and um Gord, Gord Peterin is the um, uh, probably the most famous provocateur that I know. Um, he is uh, he he's, does an amazing job of it, uh, 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 remarkable really, um, both in his persona and his writings and his conversation, but also in, in the way that he approaches making. So this is a piece that was made at Emma Lake, which is a um, sort of a, 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 a camp for. Uh, for adult makers um, in Canada, um, uh, where people actually do collaborative work, uh, but I think it's again, it's a, it's an object that when you see it, it's it's easily dismissed. Like you know, oh, what the hell's this? I mean, you know, uh, it's a, did somebody forget to unwrap it? Um, and but what a great provocation! What what an interesting sort of thing to offer up to somebody, and um, it's sensual. Um, there's, some, there's some ambiguity about it. It's that you know you it's 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 invites you to think about what's inside of it, but it doesn't give you any answers. It just is it's just asking those questions. Um, so I think it's, it's also sort of an interesting way to to view work um, and uh, and consider things that seem like. They're not so direct, you know. Are they meant to provoke something, and and should I be um, uh, thinking of it in that way? So, <clears throat> um, 
this is this is a tough this is a tough subject for makers to address by and large um uh and um and uh i don't know that this piece is strictly about protest um uh, but it but it invites that it's you know it invites that sort of beginning of of inquiry right and um uh uh, Ellie Richards made this during the during the residency as well, and uh, this is a this is a Philadelphia police uh, barrier. So you know, one of those wooden sawhorse kind of barrier things that was discarded, and so um, very you know very interesting piece. And in that um, at, within one piece, she's 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 taking the the object which is used to divide us, right? To separate us and, um, and creating a chain out of it, which is, which is an expression of like, you know, all for one, one for all, gathering in our, uh, ourselves into something that's gonna make us all stronger. So it's a really interesting sort of flip around. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it speaks to that idea that um, you know, the, this image in the lower right, all those people are people, you know, some of them are in uniform, some of them aren't, and there's a yellow thing between them, right? And we're, we're you know, we're, we're very aware of this situation now. Um, and, uh, and it, you know, it just speaks about division and how how often we find ourselves uh, dividing ourselves um, uh, through strange means. And um, so uh, I, I, I think um, it's, you know, it's again, sort of opening yourself up to trying to think about what's the, what's the verb here that, that um, makes this happen. And then, you know, sort of, in the same conversations along the same lines um, is this piece by Wendy Mariama. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, Wendy Mariama is one of our, uh, our national treasures. <clears throat> uh, and a um, uh, consummate educator. Uh, she's, she's taught for a million years and um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of students uh, have uh, have come out of our programs and uh, uh, and have been blessed by by her her uh, her teachings. Um, and so, what's interesting is now that in her her own personal work, she continues educating. the the The, the essence of her work is um, is education. Uh, this piece, um, in particular, very very or personal um, is about executive order 9066. So this is 1942, uh, California, uh, the internment of Japanese, internment of thousands and thousands of Japanese American citizens. And we also know about this and, um, uh, and, and have our sense of history about it. But what she's done is, 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 is do something in a way that um, makes it more visceral sort of way and, and, and so you understand a little bit better what, what this might have been about. So um, this project involves uh, 120,000 of these tags that you see in the far right. These tags are not real, they're replicas. She obviously doesn't have tags, but uh, what it places you in the in the position to experience is that tag was pinned on those individuals, right? In this country, it's like, bam. Um, and um, as you can tell, I've sort of moved by this still. I mean, I've been talking about this for all week and I'm still moved by this. <clears throat> and the other interesting thing is that she, she involved hundreds of volunteers to make the tags. You know, you'd, you'd, you'd sign up and, and she'd send, send you a box of tags and a list and you'd, you'd hand write out this information. So it's not only, you know, the, the idea of doing it, 
but it's also engaging all, all these people in, in, this, in this process. It's brilliant, really. Um, Jen, yeah. wasn't her family in turn? Yeah, yeah. So to, to, to her, it's very, you know, it's very personal and, and, um, and, um, and a way of, uh, and this show, of course, is traveled because it's, it's brilliant. Um, and uh, so, um, uh, uh, again, I just think, you know, the idea of making work uh, to educate as as the as the as the operative verb in it is uh, is pretty exciting, especially when it's something like this. Um, <clears throat> all right, compose yourself, Jack. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but the, you know what's cool is for me um, uh, is to have these kinds of opportunities where uh, you know it's. Uh, it's like having homework or something. I mean, you are, I, I, I you know, I, I, I do this all the time and, and Helen will agree and sort of roll her eyes. I mean, I, I, I usually set something up that I, that I don't know what I'm doing and then just dive in and do it. And so these kinds of experiences throw me into this to sort of look at this in this way. And so it's great for me. Um, and, you know, I've been, fussing with this presentation for weeks and I'm, <laughs> I don't know why I'm still excited about it. Um, <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> so, um, uh, this, is, this is sort of a, a different, I can turn to a different page here. Um, and uh, thinking about making as meditation. Uh, and uh, I had the distinct, uh, privilege of uh, being uh, in the same studio with Raleigh Monroe, he's from uh, New Zealand, uh, when he made this piece. It's sitting here on the table. Um, and uh, uh, so I experienced him in this process. And, and uh, uh, you know, Raleigh's a Kiwi. I mean, he's a fun loving guy. Uh, so, so it's, we had plenty of fun, but, but I was also sort of just really um, moved uh, and interested in the fact that uh, uh, he would sit there uh, at the bench pretty much hours on end, almost all day, uh, except for lunch, and uh, work on this piece. And uh, it's so intricate, all the all the little markings on this piece, which you can see in this blow up. Um, and, um, uh, and, you know, it's a, it has to do with the Pacific Rim, obviously. Um, and, uh, but, it, but it's also sort of like this strange combination of this ancient, um, almost calligraphy, mark making, right? Combined with this sort of futuristic form. Um, and uh, so, uh, and, and we, we talked a bit about it and, and I, it, I really came away with feel, feeling that, you know, this was a meditation for him in terms of uh, making these marks. I mean, uh, I don't know that I could reach that level of meditation. Um, that would be cool to think that I could. Um, but uh, I, I'm uh, very impressed by it and also moved by it that uh, this is the way he was, he was uh, uh, learning from making the piece and becoming more engaged with that thing that he was exploring. And um, so, uh, you know, a, a remarkable um, uh, approach really. And, um, and the result is a very compelling piece. Um, that I think invites uh, invites a lot of inquiries. There's a lot of entry doors into all these pieces, uh, but um, but uh, for me, you know, uh, trying to trying to understand that level of meditation and the engagement is is sort of really rich, a rich uh, experience. <clears throat> so this piece by Yuri, um, also done at, at the Wingate um, uh, residency program, 
within the Wingate President. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I, I, it's, this is informed by, by a, 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 a quote of hers. Um, uh, I danced with wood without choreography. Um, and it, it, uh, it, 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 interesting way of sort of explaining her approach to this. And, um, uh, you know, for me, the, the little stand is a concession uh, for the reality of having to have this sit somewhere and be viewed. But this thing, um, uh, when, it's, when it's living out in the open, and particularly if it's living in your hands, uh, which I, I had the benefit of doing, um, is a remarkable experience, and it's and it's and it is a form experience, so, um, and um, and just exploring, you know, just exploring the inside of this, uh, which is a which is a, you know, a, a the reverse version of the outside, uh, is. Uh, is sort of a delight, and it's and it's just about form. And and she talks about it uh, that um, she was just interested to see uh, if she could uh, find a process by whereby the the wood simply came together in this form without a lot of uh, 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 overly manipulating or whatever. So um, and and I think a lot of pieces are that way. They're just you know they're just exploring form and, it's, and what a great thing to be able to um, share, I think, in terms of looking at stuff. Um, so. <clears throat> uh, so technique is a, another interesting doorway of, uh, into looking at things. Um, David Pye is a uh, 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 has been such an influential individual, uh, uh, particularly in our field, but I think across a lot of fields. And, and having done some teaching, I can tell you, um, uh, I would I would refer to this guy's um, uh, writings uh, almost every semester. Um, and uh, the the book that he's most famous for here, uh, the Nature and Art Workmanship. Uh, is a great read uh, uh, and great reread, but uh, there's a couple things in there that that are uh, little little nuggets, little gems, and that is um, uh, thinking about making and thinking about the um, the workmanship of certainty versus the workmanship of risk, and um, and. In a, and thinking about that in a way that you approach your own work and, and, and what is satisfying and what is, uh, uh, gives you the, the, the experience that you're looking for in terms of uh, 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 making something. So uh, this dish is, is an expression of the workmanship of certainty. Uh, and, and he's found a way to, to uh, that, that there's a very controlled markings on this on this plate on this dish, and um, uh, and for him, I think at, at this this speaks to me that he must have found a great deal of serenity in that because this this would take a lot of patience uh, to do that, um, and if he were to do it through the workmanship of risk, which is um, not a less controlled process, he probably wouldn't end up with the same object, but equally valid object, it would just be sort of a whole different thing. So it's a great sort of um, way of thinking about things. I know uh, it's interesting, the similarities between his work and uh, Friedrich Kuhn's work. Um, uh, and uh, Friedrich's, Friedrich's bowl is, uh, has a lot of the same characteristics, right? I mean, if you looked at it strictly on characteristics, it's it's got movement in it, it's got markings, it's got um, a certain scale, maybe the same material. So it has all these characteristics that are same. The, the, the thing that's being explored here is, is completely different. And this is the workmanship of risk. This is, this is just um, uh, creating a bowl and, and working the surface uh, with a great deal of aggression. 
And um, I think that was, that was a directly, uh, direct result of his experience that he was having at the time uh, in terms of making and, and, and being in residency and so forth. And so it's a really interesting record of that experience. Um, and uh, that, it would, that the markings would be uh, uh, so sort of aggressive and, um, and, uh, and in a way exciting. Right, so anyway, um, are we doing okay time wise? Okay. Uh, so this, this is an area that um, within the craft dialogue, we don't talk too much about, um, uh, and that's to replicate. Um, and, in, and the truth of the matter is that. Um, if you think about the, the world of objects and, and um, uh, the, the, human, the human output of, of making, uh, probably most of it's been replicating over the years in this, in this same kind of way. And, um, and uh, uh, I think that it's, a, it's an interesting way to experience things and to think about the idea that um, that's a that's a skill set, really, um, and it's not the skill set of, of, um, you know, uh, Susan Hagen's carving, for instance, which is which is, you know, each individual stroke is it matters and it's important to the you know, outcome of that and uh, and uh, very difficult to replicate. So uh, these these speak about the idea of uh, the the. The, the, the craft, the energy, the care taken to set up a process whereby you can replicate instead of saying, you know, you're, you're, each, each thing is so carefully crafted that the process has to be set up. And um, uh, uh, this, uh, this fellow, uh, and I hope I don't really mess up his name too much, but I have high regard for him regardless of how I pronounce his name. Uh, Ahmed Abdelazam, Abdelazam um, did a, uh, an object lesson um, a while back. Very interesting, I, I, I recommend, I recommend looking at, the object lessons are all recorded, so you can look at all these object lessons. But um, uh, he very eloquently spoke about um, balustrades. Uh, which is the, the you know the, the image here on, on the upper right is a bundle of balustrades uh, showing what I think was the the original item it, it's painted that it was brought into John Grass wood turning and 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 they and then they were asked to then make replicas of that so that it, it could uh, a balustrade could be restored right so so Ahmed talked uh, very eloquently about balustrades and and in general about this whole idea that so much of our built environment, um, the, the care that has gone into building it uh, goes unnoticed. It's sort of, you see it, you see a balustrade, oh yeah, it's a nice balustrade. Yeah, let, me, let me look over the balustrade at the view. You know, it's, maybe it's blocking my view. Um, so, uh, and, and it's, you know, he sort of, encouraged putting the balustrade in, into uh, in more of a contextual uh, way of uh, looking at things and sort of like saying, this is part of the view. And, um, and you know, in balustrades particularly, not so much with um, um, uh, rolling pins, but with balustrades, the care that's taken uh, uh, just in the, in the formal consideration of uh, the, the object and the negative spaces between the objects, which is, which is an essential part of all balustrades. Um, and um, so anyway, I, I think I just, you know, uh, I, again, I, I, through, his, through his presentation and then my revisiting the, the, um, uh, the collection, I mean, I've seen this, this collection of balustrades uh, hundreds of times. And I, and I sort of like, I went back to it and said, wait a minute, what's there for me? Um, 
and uh, so anyway, it's, it's, it's fun to, to be um, encouraged to look at it that way. <clears throat> uh, so these these objects, um, I've I've labeled this slide to perfect. Um, these these objects are made on uh, uh, an ornamental lathe, likely a Hofsau lathe, which is down in the right hand corner. Um, uh, and uh, this type of of turning, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> dates back to the 17th century. So this this is this is not a newfangled thing. It's it's sort of an old fangled thing in a way. Um, but uh, 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 both Gorst and, and Walter here have, um, have devoted themselves to um, understanding how to use this crazy machine. I, I visited Gorst and, and, and went to the studio and looked at this machine and, and you know, I mean, it scared the hell out of me. I mean, uh, no way. I, I, I don't have the aptitude to actually um, use that machine and make one of these objects. Um, I'm okay with that. Um, but, uh, but it's, uh, and so on the one hand, in, you know, in relationship to Susan's hand card piece or, or, or Raleigh's, um, uh, you know, hand scribed piece, uh, these are like, well, wait a minute, these are made on a machine, right? Yeah, but the thing is, this machine had to be set up. It just, you can't sort of like say, I, you know, I would like the oval compote, please. Could you just put it out? Um, it's, it, there's, and so understanding the machine and understanding how to use it, the nuances and how to, how to get it to do what you're interested in doing is a, is a beautiful expression of, um, you know, of, of craft and that care that, um, that goes into it. And, um, and so they, they make these, sort of um, really remarkably perfect pieces. Um, and, it's a, and, um, and you'll see within the cases, there's, there's quite a lot of this in, in, the, in the collection. And it's, um, um, we tend to think of it as, well, yeah, but it, you know, where's the artistic expression in this? Yeah, you know, I'd say. Uh, and um, I think we need to slow down a little bit and, 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 and find that um, because there's, there's a great deal of care that's gone into these. Um, so no, it's an interesting look. Um, so, <clears throat> so here's a piece that um, in the case uh, we could look at and look past, right? It's like, oh my God, somebody left a couple of chunks of wood in the display case of the collection, right? But, um, uh, Gary Bennett, um, who we just very recently lost, um, is a remarkable maker. <clears throat> and uh, if you look at his work, um, uh, there's definitely an element in this where he's he's just looking for a smile and 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 uh, and having and he's having fun. He, uh, th this guy. Gary's uh, like a mountain of a man, uh, but he he was concerned with and um, devoted to uh, the idea of you know exploring fun uh, and life through fun, and um, so a lot of puns in his work, um, uh, very engaging, um, very good wit, <clears throat> uh, a very funny guy. Although I, I can't say as I remember ever seeing him smile. And I don't know, I mean, he had, he had a gigantic beard. He had a beard like this. And so somehow the, the, his, you know, the voice came out of it, but it was just like this. So maybe the beard masked his, his smile. I don't know. Uh, he's smiling on the inside. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, he's made uh, all of us that have ever met him or you know, been engaged with his work smile. Um, and I think there's a lot of work that uh, is about that. And um, it's interesting to me that um, uh, objects that we would say are inanimate um, uh, are 
basically um, have the ability to animate if you if you give them some space and and uh, and open up to them. Um, so uh, uh, thank you, Gary, as always. <clears throat> Okay, uh, last slide. Um, and um, last and not least. Um, so, uh, Stockdale's guy, uh, not an art school guy, um, uh, really came in through, through making, through strictly making and, and working wood and so forth. Um, uh, intimate, uh, economic, uh, sort of modest. This is the kind of object that um, uh, so speaks for itself. I, I, I don't really need to say much about this object. Um, uh, I'm always moved by it. And um, <clears throat> there's a certain beauty in it that's just so pure and um, that uh, uh, you know I never tire of this and the interesting thing is when I, my, my funk of this and I looked at it and and uh, so forth I realized that um, one could see this in the case and think I've seen hundreds of these right and I think that's true uh, we have seen hundreds of these and there's a reason right he did one and then hundreds of people did the same thing so it's sort of crappy they copied him oh they copied him he inspired them right so another another moving piece for me obviously sorry but um but it's uh i think that's really cool and it's, you know, it speaks a lot about makers and making and, and us taking the time to try and be at one with Stocksdale, you know, and take the time to say, wow, that is a thing of beauty um, and a, a great understanding of uh, what he was doing connection with what he's doing and 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 the material he was using and the technique he was using and um it's such a pure thing that it's like out of boom um uh so um so i look at my notes and the notes say in bold letters uh no conclusion uh so that uh let's talk jack i'd like to throw in something about bob stocksdale because uh those of you who do not know bob stocksdale is married to a wonderful textile artist Kay Sakamachi. but for me his work and it's really interesting if you pick these two pieces to be next to each other because you talk <laughs> about meditation here and that's how i always thought about bob stocksdale married to a, a japanese american woman and the sense of meditation and peacefulness of that relationship mm -hmm. was so beautiful and so perfect. Yes. And Bob's work was about that kind of modest perfection that you might find if you were in a, in a Japanese garden. Yes. And right. It's wonderful to hold. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it, and it's, it, it, it is, it is uh, uh, somehow attached to that whole uh, uh, conversation about the, the, uh, uh, the objects that are made by people that are not artists, you know, that come out of particularly um, of Japan and, 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 and Asia in general, and, and Korea. And speaking about that whole issue, um, uh, those of uh, us who knew Wendy Moriyama, know Wendy Moriyama, but those who don't, may not know that Wendy Moriyama was born with a, a hearing defect and um, and yet nevertheless that never put her off I mean I'm thinking about it right now because we just saw an extraordinary film hope you'll see it 
called Coda, uh, which won the award for the best film in the Academy Awards just recently. And Coda is about this issue of how deaf people navigate the world. And I always thought one of the most courageous things about Wendy was her ability to get up in front of an audience, and she was a lip, she's a lip reader, but she can speak clearly uh, with a light, slight accent, but she was never in fear of her being able to be a communicator. And she chose a field in which communication is essential. Uh, it's to remarkable, be a, to be a really. It's remarkable. Uh, you know, and, and those pieces, of course, are out of her own life because her parents, as well as her, were in a, 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 one of these camps. And, uh, and it was a thing that sort of came to Wendy very late in life because it wasn't, those pieces are, are uh, toward the end of her life. Uh, uh, but she's not dead. No, I mean, to say, I mean to say that yeah. they were they were after Easy now. a Let's long career because Wendy is in her seventies, I'm guessing, at this yeah, point. Right. Uh, and this these pieces came toward toward the latter part of her active career. She's still an active maker. Um, and I think that those are really important things to think about because this whole business of um, of the business of making things. I mean, I, I, the the you, the idea of a verb. I thought it was an interesting way to pick this up, Jack, because I think about this exhibition that we saw at the Corcoran um, of an exhibition of the, of the Chinese uh, artist Ai Weiwei. And one of his pieces is him dropping a vase on the floor and the act of the movement of the vase. That the whole business of a verb is about something in time. The business of time. And, and so all of this stuff has this kind of business of quick time, immediate time, slow time. You know the whole business of time is so essential part of all of this. Uh, yeah, and I and I I'm always struck by that aspect of uh, the way the human mind works. You know the way we can sort that out in our heads, come up with something. I mean, I remember years ago uh, we saw this wonderful exhibition that was curated by John Baldessari at the from the uh, from the the um, the, uh, the collection in Washington D.C. Not the Corcoran. Um, well, the, the exhibition was when he was invited to go to their collection, like Jack did here. That's what brought, brought it to mind. And, and so he picked a group of things from their collection, and he focused on not the things that were these uh, paintings or, or objects. Hirschhorn, Hirschhorn, Hirschhorn thank you. They were, they were the chairs that were in the paintings that he chose. And he chose to make that decision. How would you see the chair in this context, in that context, in this century? That century and the whole idea of how we how we change our perceptions with what the exhibition is about and and how we have sort of locked into certain perceptions but they're not locked in if you allow yourself the freedom to think about them differently then it opens you up to a whole other set of thinking processes uh, amen. As, as, as jack did here today amen other comments well, I, I wanted, to, I believe that Anne Hamilton yeah. had an installation down at Cherry Street. Yeah, right? she did. Right. And that was just amazing. Yeah. Susan Hagen had one at the prison, Eastern yeah. State. Yeah. Right? yeah. It was also incredible. Yeah. Um, the piece on meditation you said was obviously about the Pacific Rim. I don't know. Why that's obvious? Oh, well, true enough. Maybe it's not obvious. Yeah. Look, so, so the question is that that um, what Rob was raising is that it's not so obvious to her that this is about the Pacific Rim. Um, so part of it has to do with um, Aboriginal work. Um, Aboriginal work. Uh, yeah, that um, you know that. Uh, I mean, first off, you, you, you have to familiarize yourself a little bit with the language, you know, of, of making in, in those regions, you know, and so, uh, but the, the, the language is very much about uh, mark making and, um, and, and, and incision and stuff like that. So, um, uh, and, and, and I think uh, it's, it's a good point. I mean, I, I, come, I come at the experience of this piece with, with perhaps more nuance than you do because I knew the guy and, I, and we talked about the piece. So, um, 
Uh, so I think that's an interesting point. And, and um, you know, uh, it'd be interesting to, to see how well that holds up in terms of a, a thesis. Yeah. Yeah. Then, I also think that there's a duality here because what the artist is doing, the verb that's taking place while the artist is making, might not be the same verb that happens with the view. So, for instance, to do a piece that inspires others, would someone really be doing something for that reason? Or is that what happens after the fact? Or are you watching him make this? I'm sure it was very meditative yes, in right. his making. But so I think it's interesting, you know, when you, I was thinking about all the, the kind of categories of to inspire, to educate, to replicate, et cetera, and how the intention there kind of shifts when it goes away from the craftsman or artist or whatever you want to call the maker, right? Yes. And, you know, it may be the same, it may not be the same. Yes. Well, it, and, and so, I can summarize that a little bit. Uh, Lynn, Lynn brought up a, 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 an important um, uh, a way of considering this, and that is, you know, the verbs that I'm using here, uh, I don't see as necessarily expressing the intent of the maker. Um, so I offer them as as a, as one one window or one doorway to look at at the object, um, but um, I, I certainly doubt that Bob Stocksdale uh, made this bowl to inspire people. Yeah, I, I mean, A, not that kind of guy, and B, that's a sort of a steep climb. And, um, and, uh, and I've, I've stayed away from intent a lot um, uh, with this on purpose because uh, A, you rarely fully know that, and B, uh, it's not always the most important thing uh, in order to have a full experience, I think, right? I mean, so it's it's sometimes interesting and it's informative, but, um, you know, what you see and what you get out of a piece may be completely different than the intention. And so what? I mean, for, <clears throat> for a lot of people, the intention, for a lot of makers, uh, the intention has nothing to do with you. You're not making... Uh, something in order to solicit a certain reaction. They're they're exploring. They, they want to see what's going to happen if they do this and what their experience is. So um, so yeah, it's it's tricky. So that's uh, I think it's part of my oversimplification in terms of the presentation. To sort of like call out these things, but uh, I and I, I should have preferred it and said, you know, this is not the intent. This is, this is you know, my. Uh, Yes. I'm sure that there was part of that in her maker. Yes. Can there be something that transfers over? Yeah. Yeah, Wendy. Yeah, Wendy. You don't take on a piece of that scale with that specificity to, you know, to without a, that's a, that kind of an intention, I think. And that's a good example of where uh, her, her intention is very clear, I think. Um, uh, just because uh when you're when you're speaking about education the the the, the specificity of the communication needs to be such that um you know the intent is, becomes more clear if that makes sense i don't know that grouping of words was put together exactly right but <laughs> jack um now has a question about the uh one of the aspects of the craft a craft that has always fascinated me is the connection between the maker throwing a pot or forming a furniture joint today. And one that was using the same techniques thousands of years ago. How would you contextualize this in this conversation on the practice of craft in terms of time and action? Wow. <clears throat> Um, let me just ask, did, uh, can somebody give me a thumbs up? Did you hear that question? It's, it's written in the chat, so they can, so the viewers can read it in the chat. Oh, in the chat? Yeah. 
Right. <clears throat> Well, that's a that's a fun question. Thanks, Nava. <laughs> Whoa. Um, well, I think you know. I think it gets down to a, a, a very basic uh, sort of experience that happens uh, within the moment. It's not. Um, it is that moment of of. Uh, in the process of making whatever, wherever you are within the process of trying to realize uh, an object or a poem or a hamburger or whatever it is. Um, and uh, the thing that, the, the, the thing that knits this all together, I think in that's, that comes under the, the, the umbrella of craft is the care. And so uh, there's a lot of human activity. Uh, we're, we're, we're busy doing lots of different stuff and, um, and the things that I think are that uh, that connect these objects through the ages, are, are, uh, I think the primary one is is the um, the being in the moment and the care taken taken to do it, um, and uh, uh, maybe not so much the intention as we've sort of just talked with Lynn a bit. Um, uh, I think it it has to do simply with the care. Um, and, um, you know, if you are in the moment when you are doing something, you are obliged to care about what you're doing. Um, and so, uh, that's, that's, that's the, uh, that's all I can come up with now. <laughs> Do you want more? <laughs> like the idea of that books once written and published belong to the readers. Great. Uh, uh, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, brilliant, Asha. That's a that's a good that's a good um, perspective. Um, and uh, intent is for the viewer to determine. Um, uh, I think so. And and, and you know it's a little bit semantics. I'm, I'm not quite smart enough to, 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 uh, to uh, buy in completely to that is what intent is about. I think there's a lot different, a lot of different intents, but um, it's certainly, um, uh, it's certainly the thing that we can all have control over is, is our own intentions. And so that's really what we're talking about today is our intentions and, and do we, you know, do we intend to, have an experience that's expansive uh, when we look at things. And um, so uh, in, in that case, yeah, it's, it's, it's the intent you know, of, the, of the viewer. Um, All things crap. No, we haven't. <laughs> Fortunately, you're very welcome. We're not going to be here for three days. I'm I'm not actually equipped to do that anyway, so we're good. Back to some questions. I'm, I'm Ken. Uh, I really like the Ann Hamilton quote that you had, and one one part of it made me think. Uh, if she said. I don't call myself an artist. I call myself a maker. So I was wondering what. I, I never thought about that. I've always thought, like I actually work for a tool company in finance. So and we talk about makers all the time. I think about creating things, but I never tied it to like a, an artist creating things. I would, I would never think of like, oh, an artist is a maker unless you know you're making something like wood or statue, not really like a painting. So I was wondering. Uh, how you, since you like selected that quote, do you, how do you understand what she said? I'm, I, my mind was kind of blown. Right. So, uh, to, to the questions about uh, Anne Hamilton's quote, um, I don't know if we can put that back up, probably not. Um, you want to share your screen again? 
Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Um, and um, the what's not in the quote, but 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 um, uh, she often says uh, is is part of this question, and that is that um, she doesn't consider she doesn't refer to herself. I would say is the correct way to say it as an artist. She refers to herself as a maker, um, and. Um, uh, there's a lot of ways to in, in, interpret this conversation, and we and um, would that we could have Anne here. Um, that would be great, because um, uh, then uh, um, I <laughs> I'd, I'd be really happy. Um, uh, so um, I think I think she's playing a little bit devil's advocate. Um, she she is by all accounts, an artist, a great artist. Uh, nobody's going to say, oh, she's not an artist, she's a maker. Um, I think what she's doing with her pulpit, uh, which she's developed because she, when she speaks, it comes out like that quote. That's, that's not like a one-off. I mean, it just keeps coming out of her mouth like that. Um, I think what she's doing is saying, <clears throat> let's talk about these things as shared experiences. Let's take this out of the context like, you know, I'm the artist and you're not. You know, it's not us and them, it's us. And, um, and so that's always the, 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 the way that I've under, understood what she's talking about. And, and, uh, and it, it, uh, it resonates with me, so, so I like that. That that uh, sort of uh, description or interpretation. I think that um, uh, uh, she, uh, and it's clear when you see her work that uh, it's it's mostly meant to engage individuals, and so it's very interactive. And so uh, she, she does pieces where uh, she, you know people are moving around and moving in swings and and. And curtain, and they're activating curtains, and uh, so it's like a playground. It's actually like a playground uh, for all ages, and, and a lot of stuff for kids uh, in terms of discovery. So um, she sees that process as making an experience possible, and that's a that's sort of a much different approach than saying I'm making artwork. Um, right, so it's a much, much different uh, um, a screen to, to to be viewing through, and um, so um, so that's what I, that's what I think that's about. And that's why I brought I, it. In. I think there's another word that you could add, and the word is choreography, because the, the nature of her work is that you're participating in some kind of a dance, um, and um, and and you're invited in in a very casual way participate at any level that you wish to. Uh, and her art is engaging because um, it isn't about, uh, as Jack said, uh, us and them. Uh, it's really about all of us together in this process of, of walking into this environment uh, of these huge, um, 30 foot high pieces of fabric that are moving in space. And you're moving in that same context of those objects. Didn't she do the swing installation that the armory and the yeah. Yeah, that's right. that's okay. so, so Rick's talking about um, uh, Anne Hamilton's work as as uh, also being really concerned with choreography yeah. um, and, and not not a specific dance move, but the choreography of of, yeah. of humans in space kind of a thing. So it's a very very exciting work. Um, yes. She's she's at the top of my list. Um, Anything else? Any conclusions? <laughs> you don't want any conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I, I'm open for whatever. <laughs> uh, okay, I think. Thank you. I think that's Thank a wrap. Um, thank you all so much for. Uh, slicing a piece of your Friday night out. Um, uh, 
you know, I'm wondering, what are the bars closed? What's, what's the problem here? So, but uh, thank you very much. It's been, uh, it's been a very fun and rewarding experience. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thank you.